Well, hello there, friends. Um, I'm just shining a little light on myself. I thought I'd make a video. Uh, I saw on the, um, the little chat, uh, Bonnie put up, um, something about entity attachment. And that was really good, so I thought I'd, uh, expound upon upon that. And it was good to see you, Bonnie. I remember talking to you, and I finally got to see see you and hear your voice. So that's awesome. But anyway, um, so in my book, um, I wrote about this guy named Peter Gerlach. Okay, and he's still got his information on the internet. He's got some videos on YouTube, and he's got a website. I don't know if he passed away or or or, or what, but um, past few years he hasn't put anything up, so you know I don't know where he is. But he's got some excellent information, and um, when we talk about entity attachment, yes, there are entities that do attach. <laughs> Hence the word entity attachment, or the phrase. But um, there's also um, within a person there can be something that resembles entity attachment or demonic possession or demonic oppression is what uh, we would call it. Those of us who are come from uh, a, a Christian or biblical based background, we, we usually speak in terms of spirits or demons and things of that nature, disembodied, lost souls, all those types of things, which do exist. Okay. Um, but Peter Gerlach's work, he brought a different dimension and something that's somewhat ignored when a person has a fragmented soul due to trauma different parts of that person's soul that has been fragmented they begin to somewhat mutate and they cause problems in a person throughout their entire life so for instance if I if a person got let's say verbally abused pretty heavily by one of their parents um, growing up. The per, a part, if it's bad enough, a part of their soul, and it doesn't take a whole lot for a child, most of these fractures in the soul uh, happen during childhood. A person may have a fragment of their soul broken off at, say, seven years old. And that person remains that fragmented Part of your soul remains a seven-year-old. It remains a seven-year-old who is verbally abused. And what it does is it tries to protect the, the soul. It tries to protect the overall person. So what it does is it, 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 it creates a, uh, it might create a sub-personality that is extremely untrusting and extremely um, cold they don't trust people and they're not able to accept love from others and they're not able to accept love from others means that they're not able to give love to others either so that seven-year-old sub personality turns itself into some type of very cold and, and seemingly evil person. And different triggers throughout an adult's life will bring that sub-personality up, okay? So that person is, that sub-personality, uh, it has been created in order to protect the person from being hurt and then protect the person from dying or suffering the pain of consistent emotional and verbal abuse but it comes to a point in time when that individual grows up and now he is 
an adult and he has his own life and he's not around that parent anymore, so it shouldn't bother him anymore. But yet that subpersonality has been within for so many years and it's had so much power and it's been able to do so many different things um, in so many different situations in that person's life that it's not going anywhere now. Now it's being fed. It's being fed, so it is mutated in that and that subpersonality is now, it now displays the characteristics of a demon. Extremely um, selfish, and evil, cold-hearted, and backbiting, and gossiping, and all these kinds of things. Now, just imagine, that's just one subpersonality, and then you have, say you have five more from all other different types of tra traumatic events during your existence yes so and each one of them have grown in their their evil because offenses always come and what did it christ say that offenses will come woe to those by whom they come or something like that especially when it comes to the children because that's usually when all of these offenses come and that's when the most fracturing of the soul takes place during childhood. So what one has to do, and Peter Gerlach goes into it uh, pretty detailed, is you have to go within yourself and you have to speak to those sub-personalities within you. And you have to comfort them and you have to get them to basically join your higher self, I guess you can call it. I don't know what, you know, people say these words. I don't know what any of it means, but you kind of just feel it. You kind of just feel it, you know? People talk about the higher self and uh, all this other stuff. I don't, I don't really just uh, be knowing what all that stuff means, man. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, but you, you kind of feel, you, you feel, you feel, what it means as opposed to being able to explain what it means. So what you do is you you make all of your subpersonalities, you have to have conversations with them and you have to go deep within them and you have to heal them and let them know that, hey, I no longer need you to be this way anymore because I've overcome um, the situation that created you. But what you can do is you can join me and we can be one. Once you become one within your soul, you become one within your body as well. All of your different bodies, your emotional body, your mental body, and your spiritual body, and all of the different ethereal bodies. And uh, supposedly we have seven different bodies and all that weird stuff, right? Once all of that becomes one with all of your sub-personalities, then you, you have protection against the disincarnate spirits, the evil spirits and the actual demons that come from without your body to come within. You have protection against that because you're no longer a fractured soul. You are a whole soul, right? So hopefully that made sense. Um, I just basically am talking... I did not rehearse or anything of that nature. Um, what else was I? I was gonna talk. I was gonna say something else. I didn't want to just talk about entity attachments. Oh, oh. So what's cool is like um, they talk about two thousand twenty being um, like some type of uh, December two thousand twenty. There's the event is supposed to happen. There's supposed to be some alignments with Saturn and Jupiter and. And all that stuff, and you know, um, there's supposed to be whatever is happening, there's going to be an alignment, and which is going to pierce the veil between dimensions, right? So, um, certain dimensional, extra dimensional forces can come into our realm, which is pretty cool, you know what I'm saying? I think it'll be a catast catastrophic event where lots of, uh, demons and, and, and just monsters come into our realm and they plague certain people, okay? Because if you're 
heart is not pure if your heart is uh, evil. Or if you're, what do they say in the Bible? If your eye is single, if you're double-minded, then you can, you, those, those spirits or whatever, those extra dimensional beings will come in and they will torment you and probably destroy you or, you know, lead to all these mass suicides that they keep predicting in these movies, right? But then at the same time, I think that could be uh, also a, a time where the, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit could happen, right? Because the, the, the veil would be pierced between the heavenly realms and also the demonic realms, but the heavenly realms. And if your heart is pure and if you've um, ridded, ridded yourself of, of all these negative or evil emotions that we, um, that we have like our envy and hatred and um, our ego being, you know, out of control, um, being proud, uh, f you know, fornication and lust and, and, you know, all the bad stuff, you know, all the things that we have within us that uh, we have to uh, overcome, okay? I think at that point in time, if we can overcome, and that's just, this is just from me watching YouTube videos about the 2020 thing, for all the astrologers on on um, in this group, uh, I would like your opinion. You know, I mean, it's a it's a it's a topic that takes somebody that that really is a extremely you know an extreme student of astrology. I do astro astrological reports myself, but it's more numerology than astrology. I do a little bit of astrology. I put a little bit of astrology in there. But mainly, I do your numerology reports, your live path, all your all your numbers, your cycles, and all that type of stuff. And um, I do, uh, you know, an entire it's about a fifty slide presentation that I do for people. Um, if anybody wants one, you can get it on my website. And I also have my book on my website and everything as well. But half of that stuff, you know. Half of that stuff, guy, I, I don't even remember what I wrote in my book because I do remember some of it, but uh, you, when you, you get information when you need it, it comes to you. I feel like you just, uh, you, you, you speak by the, the Holy Spirit, I believe, because I'm a Christian. So I believe in the Bible and I believe that you speak through the Holy Spirit when you're through the inspiration of um, angels or the Holy Spirit or whatever when, you, um, when you're really in tune, you know what I'm saying? Or you could speak from demons, cool, too. I mean, but I don't think I do that. I don't think I do that. I'm pretty sure I don't, but maybe but I'm pretty sure I don't. I mean, I'm not a perfect human being, but I don't think I'm channeling demonic spirits but hey i don't know but anyway so I, a lot of the stuff that i get just comes to me right during certain times and then you know when i do my numerology reports it's all scientific so the numbers are easy you just add up you know the numbers are easy anybody can do the numbers but i kind of um try to connect to the person Knowing their name and knowing, uh, you know, a little bit about them. I, I give you a questionnaire, and I and I want you to tell me how you, how was your childhood and stuff like that, so I can kind of connect to you on a spiritual level, and then I kind of give you my intuitive feelings about, you know, how I feel you should structure your life and and things of that nature, right? But I'm not like a dude. I don't remember all these scientific terms and. You know, like I was talking about the higher self and all that. People get all I don't I don't know nothing about all that. I just I mean I, I understand it to an to a point, but uh you know people do like, you know ten hour series is on. How you create your own reality and I, I, I yeah I get you, I get it, but to me it doesn't take like. It doesn't take ten years, you know, to, for me to understand that you know it's just like. You just get it, and then when you, when you teach, the 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 key to teaching is 
teaching so that other people can understand it. The key is not trying to make yourself look smart. It's to teach so other people can understand what you're saying and they can break it down and they can utilize it in their normal everyday activities. That's the key to teaching. And, you know, the really good teachers, man, you know, they channel the Holy Spirit or they channel whatever uh, spirit that's going to give excellent information that people can utilize in their everyday life. Okay, so if I sound, uh, if I look like I'm not very knowledgeable, I'm probably not. You know what I'm saying? But if you uh, can pick out the nuggets of uh, wisdom, you can apply it to your everyday life and you can be uh, very successful. So, Peter Gerlach's work, again, with the fracturing of the soul, which can create somewhat of a, um, a demonic type of presence, but yet not really be demon possession or entity, entity possession. That can happen, and that needs to be healed and rectified, okay? Which will give you certain protections against real demonic spirits and then once we need to once we um get this whole uh, what's going to happen in december 2020 thing um understood we need to purify our hearts you know for that time maybe nothing's going to happen but just in case it does happen you want to have a pure heart and you want to be connected with god um you want to be connected with the father and you want to be connected with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, um, the Mother, right? And so that we can be a children of God, right? And Christ, he said it best, you know, he's our teacher, you know? He's mine. I mean, nobody, everybody doesn't have to believe him, but I haven't, I haven't read, heard anything that he said that was wrong up until this point, right? I don't think he said anything wrong. So um, I think he was the first person. I think he attained what we seek to attain. He attained oneness with God, but because he overcame his fleshly nature, he overcame all of the negativity that's within each one of us. And he did that so that we could see an example and we can overcome all of the sins that we have in our, in our bodies. You know what I mean? In our spiritual bodies, our ethereal bodies, whatever bodies that we got, you know what I'm saying, that have accumulated over our many, many lifetimes, because they accumulate, right? But anyway, this was a long video. So, talk to you guys later. Maybe I'll make a video next time on, um, like, uh, astrophysics or supersonic, um, Supersonic speed technology and magnetic G-force and all that type of stuff. Peace.